UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. In a humanitarian emergency, people need access to basic information such as how to access essential services, what to do in the absence of basic facilities, and how to keep themselves and their families safe. Media can reach populations quickly and at large scale, and can, get, can therefore play a critical role in supporting people in the crisis. BBC Media Action trains media professionals and humanitarian practitioners worldwide on lifeline programming, which is media programming made specifically for people affected by humanitarian crises. It aims to give people a voice and provide timely, relevant and practical information to help alleviate their suffering and assist with their recovery. It can play an important role in strengthening community engagement and accountability of relief providers. The website lifeline.bbcmediaaction.org has tools and resources for media professionals and aid workers on lifeline programming and using media and communication to help people in humanitarian and health emergencies. The website, which you can see displayed on the screen, hosts an online course, which is freely available for anyone to complete. It also hosts a wide range selection of tools and resources, many of which are available in different languages, including English, French, Arabic and Swahili, amongst others. The most recent addition to the tools and resources is the Coronavirus and COVID-19 Handbook for Media, designed to help media practitioners cover COVID-19 accurately and relevantly for audiences and to support their audiences through the pandemic. Topic by topic communication guides featured on the site contain information on core humanitarian topics and are intended to act as a starting point for media practitioners to help identify issues and topics to address in humanitarian programming. The Lifeline Production Manual which was the first tool developed on the site, is a step-by-step -step guide to making media programmes for people affected by crises. It includes sections on what information is useful to people affected by crises, how to work with the wider relief effort, the most effective ways to communicate lifeline information, and also former options and ideas for broadcast. There's also a guide on, available on the website for humanitarians and working with media practitioners and broadcasters in a crisis. All of these tools and more information and resources are available at lifeline.bbcmediaaction.org. Recently, the BBC Media Action team in Afghanistan have used some of these tools in developing their emergency radio programme, as well as when working with local media partners. Here is senior content producer, Aulia Atrafi to explain more. Hello, my name is Aulia Atrafi. I am a senior content producer for the BBC Media Action in Afghanistan. For an impactful uh, lifeline programming, we started research. We asked people around the country to tell us what their most pressing uh, concerns were. And we were surprised to find out that their most pressing concern was not COVID-19. Instead, their first concern was mental health and their second concern was access to health-related information uh, for places where there is no doctor. About 2,000 hospitals and health centers have been closed due to a uh, shortage of uh, funds. Then we used a combination of human and technolo technological tools uh, to interact and exchange life-saving information. We invited people to send us their mental health complaints and brought in uh, the country's top uh, mental health uh, uh, counselor to the studio to respond to uh, their queries. All this happened in the midst of Taliban takeover of power, affecting many aspects of the Afghan life, including the media. So before deciding on broadcast channels, we did a fresh media landscape assessment to figure out uh, which channels of communication to use, such as uh, radio, TV, and uh, the internet. To make sure we have delivered what people wanted, uh, we use a pretest with the focus groups. We broadcast 
our programs on the BBC Afghan service, as well as on about 30 very remote community radio FM stations. With the arrival of the Taliban regime, the most experienced journalist in the country either fled Afghanistan or went into hiding. So this left us to work with a few uh, reporters left in the country who would have had no exposure uh, to lifeline media programming. We used our network of humanitarian experts uh, to develop, uh, uh, to help us developing um, training modules that would enable journalists to produce uh, lifeline programming. We have been astonished uh, with the reaction of our audience and their engagement. So much so that even the Taliban allowed us to have a male-female presenter run our show.